Hello friends, welcome back. This is full stack development video series and we're building online course enrollment application. This is episode 18 and in this video, I'm going to show you something interesting. We'll be seeing how to implement the health checks and liveness probe in .NET Core Web API. So without delay, come, let's get started. So friends, before we dive in, this is the GitHub link where you will find every single project that I'm demonstrating. So feel free to go through and browse whichever project you like. For this specific video, I will post the exact link of the repository in the video description itself. If you would like to follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter and GitHub, these are the links that you can click and follow me. I will be more than happy to collaborate with you. So don't forget to follow me. Now let's dive into the video. So we are building APIs in a robust way. However, there are important aspects like health check of the system, health check of the application and all of those things, right? Including the database and other stuff. We need to monitor that. So implementing health check and liveness probe in a .NET Core Web API is an important aspect of building a reliable, resilient application and particularly for containerized and cloud hosted environment. It is very important. Health checks help monitor the status of your API while liveness checks ensure that the API is running and responsive. So we're going to see step by step how we can do this in our .NET Core Web API. First thing is go to the application that I've opened. You can get it from the GitHub. So what we are going to install is a package called ASP.NET Core HealthChecks.SQL. I'll tell you why this package is required. Other than that, everything is included in the applications, the, the default SDK itself. Now let's go to the program.cs. Okay. So in the program.cs, if you go all the way through up, wherever services are configured, what we are going to do is we are configure a service. What we are going to do is we are going to configure a service. So builder.service.add. So builder.service.add health checks and then that's the inbuilt method. It's coming. And then on top of it, we are also adding dot and SQL server. We are passing the connection string, a simple head query, the name, because this is SQL server. So I'm just giving you SQL server. If we are using more than one database, we can be specific to this, like what database we're using and all. Okay. And then the failure status. What happens if the SQL server check is failed? We can say it is degraded. And then we are just giving a tag. And at one last thing, there's one more thing that we are configuring called memory consumption thing. So add check, there's a memory that we are adding. And then we are calling a method and passing the size of the memory. We will go to this method in a moment before that. So the health check is configured and this one, right? Basically what we're doing is instead of calling and querying, uh, you know, through API, to check the database is live or not. This is the inbuilt feature that has been developed. So what we are saying is the service itself will be able to open a connection to this connection string and then a particular database. Even if it has to run a query, it will execute this query. This is not a mandatory. Okay. We should not put any heavy queries here. Okay. All what we have to do is we have to see whether the database is connected and it is working. For that opening a connection to a database should be sufficient for us to confirm the database is working. That is what this is doing. Okay. So we are checking a, a memory consumption thing. And then there's a, a class that we added. If we go inside this, basically that is implementing I health check interface. I health check interface is coming from Microsoft extension dot diagnostics dot health check. What we are doing is when the health check method async method is called, we are checking the memory of the system, whether it is within the threshold or outside the threshold. Okay. And then we are specifying the error message. Okay. This is done. Now let's go all the way through down where we have to configure the middleware. So if you come here all the way through down, the first middleware that we are configuring is map health checks. That's the uh, middleware we are calling. We are using slash health and then we are passing an option. We are saying, hey, uh, use this class. like health check options we are passing a class for the response writer meaning instead of it by it is writing by itself the way it want we are saying write it the way we want 
if you go inside this health check response writer dot write json response we we wrote this nice one uh, basically we are generating a specific meaningful name of like a data of the json like we are specifying the status and then there is a result property which is having the key and some values like status description exception duration and then we are writing this what this will help us to do is whenever you call the send point it will be able to format the response in the way that we configured so this is done second one health slash life this is the second end point again here we are saying what has to be used and what this is doing so basically this end point if you call all what it will do is if it reaches this end point it will return the status and that's it basically we can confirm that app is running whether the api is working or not we don't know app is running enough third end point health slash ready this is also same as long as the tag is ready like we're just we're just running this to see whether the application is ready or not again we're using the same response header to send the data back other than this i didn't do anything else okay so if i run this what will happen is so i'm running this locally so let's say i will take this and go here slash health see it is giving us this kind of a response basically it is saying the server is healthy and the memory is good so let's say my application memory is going up it will give you unhealthy if the server is down locally or my remote server is down it will say unhealthy so basically it is checking what other endpoints we have we have something called live it is giving a response that the application is live the app is running okay and then the last one was ready so it just checks the server okay so why are we doing all of these things any application right especially apis we need to know like you see in a real world in a real organization perspective think of this if you're doing a business okay um you your application should be monitored and should be intimated if the server goes down like if the application goes down apart from your uh, configuration in sql or like in the azure services so though application insights can you know can log a lot of metrics what if the app itself is down okay or let's say the application is running the next 10 minutes there is no customer but within that 10 minutes your app was down like the database was down you should not be waiting for exception to happen or your clients to come back to you and say hey your application is not working no proactively basically our applications will be monitored by ourselves through certain services and we will be intimated to make it down not like make it up not only that the main purpose of the health checks and all this the applications are generally containerized containerized means they'll be using docker kubernetes and all of those things right to make application into a container and work it so kubernetes there is a concept which it will be keep polling these kind of endpoints to see the app is running if the app is not running you know it will basically automatically reboot your app it will initiate a reboot of your app which you will not know kubernetes will do it and this is called self healing of application so there are a lot of benefits you can see on my screen the lot of benefits uh, for these kind of things like monitoring and alerting health checks can be integrated with the monitoring system like azure monitor health checks can be integrated with monitoring system like azure monitors and grafana and so many and which can raises alerts when the api is unhealthy so improved resilience meaning liveness and readiness probe ensures that unhealthy instances are automatically restarted liveness and not sent traffic which is readiness in environments like kubernetes meaning if a uh, app is down request going to that app will not be served it will be gone wrong right like it will give you exception so those kind of thing there's something called self healing so kubernetes can automatically restart your api when the liveness probe fails making your application self healing without manual intervention and there are two more important things called graceful startup readiness checks allow services to wait until the api is fully ready to handle the request reducing the failure during startup and the last one is the better visibility you can understand whether a failure is due to your external dependency like database or something within the app itself through the different types of checks 
like the memory check memory usage database connectivity and all of those things in conclusion all what i'm saying is implementing health checks and linus probe in your .net core web api improves the reliability and observability of your application it helps ensure that your api and its dependency are functioning properly and provides mechanism for automatic recovery in production environment this is the main purpose of whatever we just did okay there are three endpoints that we spoke about during the middle bar basically slash health endpoint is the general health check endpoint to see if your app and its dependencies are working like database memory and all of those things health slash live endpoint is for liveness check to ensure the app is running again the third one is the slash health slash ready endpoint is for readiness check whether uh, which will ensure the app is ready to handle the traffic okay like after the startup that's why these three endpoints so these concepts we had never implemented this is good to know in your application you should do all of these things see the all the reason we are building this full stack development is to know most of the important uh, application parts and the concepts that you really should know as a developer okay now we also saw how this is working in the next video i will show you how we can integrate this into azure monitor not only that we were using application insights so all of those thing concepts we will dive into the azure monitor and i'll explain you more about azure monitor in the next video if you like this video or any of the video in the series do let me know in the comment section i'll see you in the next video guys bye bye thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos if you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below happy coding